Looks like Satan's noticed that the current disruptions have been caused by everyone's favorite wing terrorist. And he's looking to do something about it. He's placed fire at placement all around the city. Now, these things look like slimy tentacles, but make no mistake, they can shoot you out of the sky. The only way we can stop these things is to literally rip out their hearts. And by we, I mean you. I'll be at the office drinking scotch. to the next one. Shakespeare, humanity's greatest playwright, and hell's most diabolical purveyor of entertainment, looks on as a brave mortal on an Orphean quest enters. The bard's interest is piqued, and he looks to test his visitor's mettle. The masked tragedies were used to enemies' cowering as they approached. But soon they realized that they faced a foe with courage and nobility. Traits uncommon in the fires of perdition. The inciting incident resolved. The time has come for rising action. on below, and as bullets and blood flew, the bard arched a curious eyebrow. Could this mortal be the exact thing that Shakespeare made? Well, but this battle is far from over, mortal. Arise! And now, Act Three! Shakespeare eagerly awaited meeting the champion that dispatched so many of his men. Undoubtedly, they were here for the Bard's aid, and while happy endings were not a thing found in Hell, Shakespeare always had a soft spot for comedies. In the land of the living, William Shakespeare is regarded as one of the most prolific playwrights of all time. However, to the denizens of Hell, the Bard is seen in a far different light. After selling his soul for fame and adoration, Shakespeare served in Hell as Satan's spy master general. In doing his duty, Shakespeare would punish the souls he was investigating by forcing them to perform in grotesque passion plays for Satan's amusement. But in a Twelfth Night-esque twist, Shakespeare found himself living a double life. While he projected an image of cruelty, his heart was as soft as Jezebel's. In secret, he would tutor her on the classics and act out the works of his mortal days. 
When Satan found out, he cast Shakespeare out of the palace, believing that the poet would be tormented by the populace of hell, far out of Jezebel's sight. But Satan had not counted on the bard's cunning. Embracing his persona of master torturer, Shakespeare and his followers, the tragedies, took root in the entertainment district, biding their time for revenge. And so Shakespeare called forth the deus ex machina to bestow our protagonist with the arcane power of force. The mortal stands in the training grounds, eager to try out his new force stomp power on the group of demons in front of them. One, two, in which our protagonist kills more demons with force stomp. Act two, in which our protagonist is greeted by foul imps. our protagonist learns that Force Stomp even works on flying enemies, enabling them to remove a dark inciter's shield before shooting them to death with bullets. There is also the day is won, and the curtain closes on our noble hero. Satan could have avoided all of this if he'd just listened. The Barrens are as good a home as any pirate could ask for. It's remote, devoid of people, and perilous to get to. Here, I can live as a pirate king for the rest of my eternal days. Bedard algorithm. That's the best one. Shiny. I got word from Blackbeard that every island has a treasure chest hidden on it. What's in the chest? I don't know. I'm not a fucking pirate. What I do know is that if you want to get that thing open, you have to find three corresponding glyphs. Look on the bright side. Nothing's trying to kill you. Down here, Oleg hates. You 
might want to swing by the old tour building. There's someone here you need to meet. That doesn't sound ominous. Emboldened by the power of song, Jezebel set out to find the one man that could save her from her impending nuptials. Fortunately for her, Johnny's trail of destruction wasn't too hard to follow. One night with any lover, but you have to punch a panda. Do you do it? Ooh, good question. Um, Mr. Gat? Who are you? Well, I'm a... We're not doing that again. Oh, okay. I'm Jezebel. Good to know. What are you doing? Threatening you. You're not marrying the president. I don't want to marry the president. Well, that was easier than I thought. My dad's making me do it. What now? Now I'm holding you hostage. You don't need to do this. Yeah, that's what hostages always say. No, like, you really don't need to do this. I'm here to help you. Yeah, but I already have the gun drawn, so, uh... Are you kidding me? Maybe. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of winging it. Can you wing it without the gun? Eh, it's a comfort thing. Not for me. What do you want? For you to put the gun down. Get used to disappointment. You sound like my father. What? He's always telling me that life is about misery, not happiness. That dreams only exist to make people forget about their own mediocrity. Man, that's depressing. Being the devil's daughter sucks. What do you want? I want to punch my dad in the face. We're gonna get along just fine. Of course, Jezebel was speaking metaphorically, but Johnny didn't notice. Jezebel was eager to help Johnny in any way she could, and vowed to find a way to sneak him into the palace. Johnny frowned at the seemingly arbitrary amount of time required for Jezebel to find a way to sneak him in. But he accepted the fact that without traditional missions, this was the best way to further the story.